Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, this is just a little simple bill. <laughs> Not much to it. Um, in all seriousness, we all know uh, exactly what this bill is. Uh, at the beginning of this session and throughout this session, we've had a lot of discussion about the effects of Winter Storm Uri and what our response would be to that. I would say from the very beginning, uh, thanks initially to, and continuing the leadership of the speaker who uh, very quickly called Mr. Goldman and I together to have some hearings that lasted for many, many hours and we've had numerous hours of discussion since then. With the sole purpose in mind of figuring out first and foremost what were the problems, what were the challenges that led to an unprecedented event that had a tremendous impact on the citizens of Texas. And once we've identified those, what are the solutions to ensure that uh, those problems do not happen again? So I stand before you today with a bill that essentially is an omnibus of many things that have already become before, come before this body. It seems like an eternity ago, but we voted for some priority House bills, House Bill 10, 11, 12, all the way up to 16, 17. This is a collection of that individual work that we did back then with some additional refinements, uh, some additional things that we've, we found out along the way. Extensive stakeholder process, tremendous amount of work for, my, uh, for our committee, and I, I would be remiss if I didn't right up front thank all the members of the State Affairs Committee. Uh, I firmly believe that despite what some of you other chairmen may think, I have the best committee. Uh, these folks have put in tremendous hours and, uh, and devoted incredible effort into making sure we could bring something before you uh, that made sense. To try to address the failures, the systematic failures, from wellhead to light switch. To try to address three main buckets, if you will, and that is oversight and accountability, communication failures, which we saw throughout the system, and weatherization, to ensure that these facilities, both utility and natural gas facilities, are prepared for these extreme weather events and will be able to continue to function and do the job that they are supposed to do. And so we have a very comprehensive bill here today. There are a number of amendments, and I appreciate those who responded to my request to submit those to me as early as possible so that we could thoughtfully consider those, as we always like to do, to make sure that uh, if we can work with you on it, we certainly want to do that. And I also uh, have a couple of amendments myself that clean up some things like some drafting areas and some other things that we uh, got from uh, feedback from stakeholders and from members Mr. and things like that. Mr. Israel, will the gentleman yield for a couple of questions? The gentleman yield for questions. Be happy to. Gentleman yields. Sharon Patty, thank you for all of your work. Um, I know it's been difficult. I had a couple of general questions for the sake of those who are watching us before we get into amendment sections here. One of my concerns, as, as we all uh, dealt with this storm and the aftermath of the storm, one of the thoughts that came through, through my office was, and I would like your take on this, is how are we prepared for future growth with the passage of this bill? We continue to grow at a breakneck pace. How do you, how, in your opinion, how do you think this bill helps us plan and adjust for future growth, given that we're seeing thousands of people come to Texas um, a month, and, and that, that, of course, has an impact on our ability to adjust to, with, our, with our system. So I thought I would just ask you your general thoughts on that. And are you speaking to uh, with concerns of capacity concerns going capacity forward? Capacity concerns. Uh, and so what I would tell you in this bill, um, to the extent that we are given clear direction to go do something specifically, we're not necessarily doing that. This, this bill uh, in its genesis was about fixing those areas that I just talked about, more structural issues, uh, oversight and accountability, communication failures. However, you will notice in this bill that we have uh, also included some intent language as it relates to some of the things that we'd like to see in, in developing solutions, market solutions. Uh, and then also in section 32 of this bill, we create essentially a select committee that's going to expend, you know, a year uh, by September 1 of 2022 would come back with a very comprehensive uh, study and recommendation to the legislature uh, having examined the entire market. Uh, I am all for, and I said throughout the process, as folks came forward with different market ideas and maybe, maybe we need to tweak this or tweak that, 
And I don't know if that's right or wrong, to be honest with you, but I, I know if we were, we're gonna make a decision in this body, I wanna make sure I have all the information that it's accurate. What's and the, so I, I, I really wanted us to push any larger discussions of market tweaks and a market that's served us pretty well for 20 plus years. Uh, that uh, probably deserves uh, a little bit of a look. We probably need to pop the hood and, and take a look at maybe some potential tweaks, and I think there probably are some. In fact, I think there are some. I absolutely think that. But I think that's something that we, better, we should do very deliberatively mm -hmm. and, and fully understand the full impact of any of those type of changes. And so we've laid out some language in here because we do want to kind of keep our eye on the ball of how we're going to address uh, capacity issues going forward to make sure that we can ensure uh, that we can support that growth because what we don't want, and I hear some reports of this, uh, folks that uh, we have, we've been blessed to have so many people and c industries, companies moving here, and we don't want there to be any doubt in their mind uh, that we're taking care of our business and that we're going to have yeah. an a, a electric grid that can support that kind of growth and that we, we want to continue to welcome you and, and we're going to have what you need with respect to assuring you that, that we're going to have a, a grid that can support you. Thank you. The select committee that you mentioned, could you recap? Uh, you've talked about your intent for that select committee. What's the membership of that committee and it, when, when would they be meeting? And what's the legislative role within that committee? All right, give me just a second here. It's in section 32 of the bill. And so we would be creating the State Energy Plan Advisory Committee composed of 12 members. The governor, the lieutenant governor, and the speaker of the house would each appoint four members to that advisory committee. Uh, and, and they would determine that. And while I can't tell you exactly what that, what that would look like or who those people would be, uh, but we, we've all, we're used to select committees around here, right? Where we have some combination maybe, and again, this would just be speculation on my part, but it seems that you, know, you would have member participation, uh, but there would be a lot of other smart folks that maybe are outside the membership uh, that uh, would probably, you would want to bring into the process to really look at the economics of, of what you might do, you know, what are the market effects, and folks that are really good at modeling and, and, and giving recommendations and, on uh, maybe wholesale market experts, things of that nature. And so I would envision a committee that's going to really dig deep and really invite all of that input from folks that, that have particularly subject matter expertise in those areas to, again, look at all the things that we list in that section including evaluating the electricity market structure and pricing mechanisms used in the state, including ancillary services market, emergency response services, all of those things to really peel back the, the layers and really look at it holistically and determine what is it that we need to do to ensure that we can continue to meet the needs of Texans. Thank you, Chair. One last question for me is, um, I think the joint committee that, that was held right after this storm, I thought the House, the House got a lot of accolades for the the, the back and forth that you had with your witnesses. Um, I wanted to, well, one of the things that was obvious was that it seemed there was a, um, the interaction between the electric industry and natural gas industry was, was clearly not a healthy relationship. Um, do you think that we are at least forcing these two industries to work together rather than attack or blame one another with this bill or, or perhaps other, other things that you're seeing as chairman? Sure. I, I would hope that we are, in fact, doing that. I know certainly there may be those that, that choose to squabble going forward. But I think first and foremost, it opened the eyes of a lot of folks to recognize the interdependency of those two industries, particularly as it relates to electric generation, right? And so I think everyone can admit there were, there were failures in communication, maybe most importantly failures uh, that maybe could have prevented some of this. And so I think we've done a good job, the committee has and this body has, of coming forward with some solutions to address that, to force that. And not only those two, but recognizing in an event like this, you need everyone from PUC and Railroad Commission to TxDOT to, to TCEQ to all of these folks that might have some sort of involvement uh, in an emergency event like this. And so formalizing that type of communication, I think, can only be beneficial going forward. Okay. Thank you, Chair. I appreciate your work. Thank you. Mr. Lamont, for our purpose. Will the gentleman, will the gentleman yield for a question? The gentleman yield for questions. I yield. Thank you, yield. Chairman Pat. In our joint hearing between the State Affairs and Energy Resources Committees, we focused on the shortfalls in the supply of electricity and natural gas. Is there anything in this bill that should be construed to give the Public Utilities Commission or the Railroad Commission the authority to take any action that would decrease the supply of electricity or natural gas in this state? Not in this bill, no. 
Thank you, uh, Chairman Patty. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Lamont, for what purpose? I move that the remarks between myself and Chairman Patty be reduced to writing and placed in the journal. Members, you heard the motion rejected. Chair Harris on its order. Mr. Turner, for what purpose? The gentleman yield for a couple of questions. The gentleman yield for a couple of questions. Certainly. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Patty. Uh, I just. I'd like to ask you. Gentlemen's time's expired. 